1.30 on the button. Awesome. We are live. Hi, Instagram. Hi, Facebook. What's going on? So, welcome. Who's here? Katie Diver. Long time no see. She just trained with me. She did her very first road runner session in our five week shred program that's going on. So well done today, Katie. That was a really, really hard session. Hi, WD Marketing, nice to see you. Guys, if you have any questions and stuff, just post them up and I'll try to answer them as I go. Um, otherwise, wait, stay there. I'll reply back when I can. So uh, the point of today is just to go through why strength training is important. This is part two. We did a part one on why mobility is important in your training program. Um, as you all know, my business is whole health, holistic health, and I believe in a holistic training program so that we can all function better, um, so that we can live a better life independently. Uh, without too much suffering. So before I start, I'll let you know that um, I will put this on on the replay as well so that you can watch it later. If you can't join me right now and you can add your comments and then I'll reply to them as soon as I can. So muscles and strength training and why the hell do we need to have guns? Why do we need muscles? What are muscles? Why, why are they even important? the question um, some people ask me you know why do we even need to strength train why can't I just do cardio why can't I just do yoga I feel strong just doing yoga I thought let me just educate you as best as I can um, I will try not to confuse you um, with all the scientific terminology so that you can wrap it around your head because I know that when I was studying I was super confused I've got a lot of notes here as well so that I don't get lost and I don't forget anything today. So um, before we actually start lifting anything, we should have a basic understanding of what muscles are and how they work. You know, our muscles are all made up of smaller cells, smaller muscle cells. They're commonly known as muscle fibers. You've probably heard of this term. They're long and cylindrical and about the size of a single strand of hair. So we've got those all over our body. We've got about 642 skeletal muscles, if I'm correct. Dr. Lawrence Kim, if you're watching, <laughs> let me know if I'm right. Um, and they all work together to help our bodies move and function well. So for example, when you bend your arm up, and down the bicep muscle is contracting and then the tricep muscle is elongating it's getting long so we need both of those to work in order for our elbow to bend um, so every muscle in your body works alongside another muscle so that's something that you should all be aware of first now we also have different muscle fibers within our muscle, okay? And they help determine what type of training we respond best to. You know how there's some people that can run for 10 million kilometers and you're like, how come I can't do that? Or you know those people that can deadlift 600 kilos and you're like, how come I can only do 20 kilos? That sort of stuff. The most common fiber types are slow twitch, fast twitch, and then I'll go through the fast twitch ones with a, in a little bit more detail. The slow twitch fibers are also known as type 1 fibers. Um, they're used for aerobic exercises where we need to convert oxygen into fuel for long periods of time. So they're very resistant to fatigue. So uh, they just don't move very quickly. Um, so these muscle fibers help people that do stuff like long distance running. Now the fast twitch or the type two muscle fibers, they fire really quick, um, but they also fatigue 
really quickly. So that's why sometimes when we're training together and we're doing an exercise and you just start dying out, that is most probably, I can, a fast twitch muscle fiber in action. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated because there's actually two types of fast twitch muscle fibers. There's type 2A, um, they have more endurance qualities, so things used, muscles that are used for things like a longer sprint, um, while type 2X muscle fibers are used only when um, a super short burst is needed. Say for example, um, like an 100 meter sprint. So those are the muscle fibers um, to wrap your head around and how they work and why they're all different and why your training style um, or whatever you're doing in your training can be different to someone else's because we're all unique, do you know? Everyone has a different percentage of fast twitch and slow twitch fibers. Um, so there's nothing <laughs> that you can really do about that. Um, some people are just naturally different. Um, however, we can always train to be better. So what is now, having said that, hypertrophy? Have you heard of this word, hypertrophy? Um, it's a very common word in the strength training and the muscle building game. Most people believe, you know, that we can increase our muscle fibers um, by weight training. In reality, we're only born with a specific amount of muscle by strength training. Um, uh, a specific amount of muscle. By strength training though, we don't actually increase the number of muscle fibers, but we increase the size of them. Does that make sense? Increasing our overall mass. Um, and that is called hypertrophy. Getting big. Um, now, there's a few different types of muscle hypertrophy. I'm not going to go into them too much. I'll just give you an overall picture so that you, uh, you can understand a little bit more about it. Um, when someone normally just says hypertrophy, they're most refer, uh, probably referring to something called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Now, there's that type of hypertrophy. There's myofibril hypertrophy and there's transient hypertrophy. So each one requires a different style of training. If you want to know about that, then you can message me and then I can let you know a little bit. Or you can go onto Dr. Google and do some research yourself. But in summary, just if you want to focus mainly on building super strong, dense muscle, you want myofibril hypertrophy. Um, if you only care about your muscles getting bigger, then you, you would focus on sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Transient hypertrophy is temporary and will appear alongside both types of hypertrophy. Okay, so when you strength train, you're basically just doing two things to your muscles. One, you're breaking down the muscle tissue so that your body will heal and rebuild the muscle back stronger. That's why I always encourage you to keep moving uh, forward and increasing your weight until fatigue. You see, our body hates when it can't do something. And it hates when it's being told that it can't do something. So when you're at like your fatigue point. When you break down your muscle fiber, it will come back stronger. Um, that's why, hi Ria, nice to see you. That's why um, when you come back after a week or two, you can lift heavier. Because your body's like, hey, hold on. You made me do this last time. I'm going to get more prepared for next time. So I'm going to hypertrophy. Um, as you start to increase your rep range, you can you increase the glycogen storage in the muscle. And this is where you get your increased size from. Um, so what does this mean? It means that there's a lot more to do with strength training than just lifting things. You need to train differently depending on your specific goals 
Uh, that's why when I train uh, with the small groups, we do all sorts of different strength and resistance training techniques. Um, that's why it's not always just strict sets and reps, you know, sometimes we do giant sets, sometimes we do um, opposing muscles, sometimes we just focus on different areas of the body. Um, it's always good to train differently um, and try everything when you're doing strength and resistance training. I've got it all covered for you. Um, with recovery, you know that saying where they say abs are made in the kitchen? Well, that saying sort of goes with muscles. Muscles are made in the kitchen because when you're in the gym, what you're doing is you're breaking apart those muscle fibers that I spoke about at the start. If you just tuned in now, it's okay, you can watch this back on the repeat and understand what the muscle fibers are and how they work. Um, so when you're at the gym, you're breaking apart the muscle fibers, but when you're at home, you're healing and you're getting stronger. So the hard work is done at the gym and you've got to put it all in so that when you're at home, you can start getting stronger. Um, so it's really important to take rest days, recovery days as part of your strength program. So the way I structure my training program with my clients is to make sure that we have a day in between of rest. Um, and I also, as you, if you, you train with me and you're watching Mondays and uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays and Mondays are the strength-based days and we have those days in between to rest and recover so that I can have you in tip-top condition for when you come back next. The general rule of thumb for those of you that don't train with me is to wait about 48 hours before you train that muscle group again. Now one thing to remember with this is that muscles work together. So when you're working on your chest, you're probably working uh, the muscles around your chest too, like your shoulder muscles, along with your upper arm muscles. Uh, recovery is different for everyone, depending on different factors such as how much you sleep, your diet, what the actual workout is, um, how old you are, as I said, your sleep quality and other recovery elements like your massage, compression therapy, infrared sauna, salt baths, ice baths, whatever you do for recovery, everyone's different. Hi Leonard, nice to see you. <laughs> um, so for a basic strength program, working out two to four days a week is good. Um, this is one of those situations where more is not necessarily better. You must recover. You have to, you have to, you have to. Otherwise you run the risk of an injury or burnout and we don't want that. Now, having gone through what muscles are, what muscles do, what hypertrophy is and strength training, why do you get sore? What is DOMS? Why, whenever you guys finish a workout with me, I always say happy DOMS. DOMS stands for something called, it's an acronym, uh, called Delayed Offset Muscle Soreness. Delayed Offset Muscle Soreness. You will most probably experience this when you begin a strength training program. It's soreness that you feel in your muscles that don't show up until one to two, sometimes three days after your workout. Hence the delayed onset muscle soreness. Um, it's a normal part of the process for your muscle repairing uh, from the damage to the fibers created while you've been exercising. It is normal to be sore after you train. Sometimes uh, when you've been training for a while, hey Kay, Kay, I was like Kaylee, Christy. Um, sometimes I don't get sore anymore because I've been training so much and my recovery is amazing. I do amazing things for my recovery routine. Um, and you sort of get a little bit discouraged, but don't ever be discouraged if you have worked 
hard and you do not experience DOMS. There's not a problem with that. You've used your muscle, you've worked out to your edge, so it's okay if you don't get sore, but make sure every time you're doing your strength and resistance training, make sure that it counts. Don't wimp out. Get a personal trainer if you, if you do start to wimp out. Um, expect to be sore for a few days after doing an exercise for the first time. So those of you that have just joined training with me, <laughs> you're getting sore already. Um, even anyone that has just started the five week shred program with me, you're experiencing soreness. Um, welcome to the DOMS. After your muscles get used to that movement and adapt to being put under stress, they'll get less and less sore every time because that's what I experience now. I'm getting less and less sore um, and more and more stronger, which is nice. So one way to make the soreness go away temporarily is, are you ready for it? What do you think it is? How do you think you can make the muscle soreness go away temporarily? Can anyone tell me that is watching? I say it all the time to my clients. The way that you can help get rid of muscle soreness temporarily. Hello, lifting physio. Nice to see you. Is to continue exercising. So the, this increases the blood flow to the muscles and helps them heal. So what I've done strategically with my programs is after strength day we have the rest day and then we do cardio so that you can keep coming in and exercising so we get blood flow into those areas that are sore and where we're experiencing our DOMS. Hello Rebecca Lewis, it's funny that you just joined in. We're talking about delayed onset muscle soreness which is soreness after training. So Beck just uh, did a strength session with us on Wednesday, so I'm pretty sure she's now experiencing DOMS. Let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, so a way to get rid of your DOMS is to start to move, do some cardio, do a light walk, come back and exercise, but just don't stop moving and stiffening up um, because the increase of blood flow will help that muscle heal. Um, however, remember that we still need them to heal so don't go nuts so if you're sore from heavy squats don't go and do heavy squats again does that make sense try doing squats with no weight or yoga or stretching to help bring the soreness down Rebecca Lewis commented yes I'm sore <laughs> me too my triceps are sore that was an epic upper body program that we did so that was a little bit about muscles and strength training. For those of you that just joined, don't worry. You can watch this back on the repeat um, where I go through sick. what muscles are, how they're formed, what they do with our body, how they grow, why you get sore and different types of training programs. Now, the reason that we must do strength training, you have to, you have to, you have to, it needs to become part of your routine for the rest of your life. Leonard wrote, that's why proper programming is very important from coaches. Correct. Um, a coach will help give you a proper program. Leonard is also a PT um, at the same gym that I work at, at Riley's Gym. You should see him if you are into powerlifting and strength and all of that sort of stuff. He's really good at that. Um, but proper programming is very important and that's why us PTs are happy to do it for you and that's why I've put out all of this information just to help you out to make sure that you're doing things right so that you don't run the risk of injury or burnout. Doing life is so much easier when you're strong, is it not? Let me start here. When it, to the benefits of strength training. When it comes to strength, I'm pretty sure it is safe to say that life is easier when you have strength. Um, think of things like carrying your shopping. Think of things like um, tripping over and falling onto your wrists and falling into a push-up. 
and being able to spring back up instead of falling over, breaking your wrist and just having no control of your muscles. Um, think about opening a jar that's really stuck, you know, having strength to do that sort of stuff is it makes your life easier. Um, whether you're 60 kilos overweight or whether you're four kilos overweight, strength training is one of the most effective ways to burn fat and to build muscle without a doubt. I encourage all of my clients to get in at least two days of strength training. That's why with my small groups, I put two uh, days of strength training and resistance training in the program. Remember, you can do up to four days of strength training. There's not a problem. Um, but people like bodybuilders and stuff, I know they have a whole different sort of training regime um, where you can train nearly every day, but obviously you're doing different body parts while the others are recovering. Weight training has been shown. This is why I love strength training. It has been shown to stop, reverse, or halt the reduction of skeletal muscle that occurs as we get older. So as we get older, we start to atrophy. So our muscles start to become less and less. And we don't want that. We want our muscles to stay firm, supple, and juicy. Rebecca wrote, it keeps my chronic injuries in check. Oh my God, Beck, me too. I swear to God, I have injured every single part of my body. Hello, Recreate Fitness. Nice of you to join. Um, so weight training, it has been proven to halt uh, the aging process because we want to preserve as much muscle tissue as possible as we get older so that we can stay independent and live better longer. We don't want to depend on people when we get older. And we are so lucky that we have this generation now where we have all of this education because uh, when in my parents' era, this wasn't a thing. So even trying to get my parents now to the gym is very hard. Baby boomers, you know, it, it's a whole different era. And unless they have an open mind, they don't believe that going to the gym and doing strength training will work. You know, my dad would rather just do gardening and stuff. At least it's better than doing nothing though. So um, I meet many older people um, in my daily life um, who would benefit from strength training. And I am on a mission to instill in all of my clients that they must continue training forever. That's why I try to make it fun, keep it social, keep the variety. It doesn't have to be the same all the time. It doesn't have to be boring. It's exciting, you have fun, you get more body confident, you get results, your injuries stay in check. There's so many benefits and I'm gonna start running through them now. What I've done for you is I've listed seven of my favorite uh, benefits of strength training and I'm gonna go through them now. Hi Ronnie, nice to see you guys. If you have any sorts of questions or comments or what um, experience with strength training helping you, please pop it up um, so I can see. Um, the number one benefit to strength training, you know, especially, you know, guys and girls alike, body confidence. Strength training, it helps you lose weight, right? And helps you lose body fat. That's what I mean by weight. And it helps you lose it in a few different ways. First, it helps you retain the muscle that you have while you eat a calorie deficit. So, we, something, a process happens in the body when you um, do strength training called protein synthesis, which amps up our muscle tissue. Um, trying to make sure it doesn't get too complicated for you. So strength training will help you retain that muscle tissue so that you don't lose that. So we don't become something called skinny fat, you know, when you're slim, but you're not toned and you're still a little bit wobbly and you're feeling weak. We don't want that. We want to retain as much muscle tissue as possible uh, while we reduce the amount of fat on our body. 
It also helps shape and tone your body nicely so you look fit, so you look healthy, helping your posture, you know, making sure that you're walking right. It gives you more confidence in your body and its function. Yes, please. That's what we all need to feel strong and confident in our bodies, not to feel weak um, and dejected. Do you know what I mean? So I, one of the biggest things I find with my clients is the minute their strength increases, their confidence increases. So um, there's a secret that I just let out of the bag. That's why I make you guys always lift up a little bit heavier. Even if it's one kilo or half a kilo or one extra rep when you're about to just give up. Number two, my second favorite uh, benefit of strength training is guess. Let me wait for a response. What's my second favorite benefit of strength training? We've got three seconds. One, two, three. Fat burn. Fat burn, fat burn, fat burn. Strength training has a much greater level of excess post-exercise oxygen consumption than aerobic exercise. What the hell did I just say? When you finish a strength workout, your body needs to replenish itself to go back to how it was before you started that workout, okay? And this takes a lot of energy. And the added benefit is, is that it can boost your metabolism. Um, for up to 38 hours after your workout. How good is that? Strength training can also increase your metabolism by speeding up your RMR. What is RMR? Your resting metabolic rate. If you don't know what yours is, um, feel free to send me a message with um, your height, whether you're a male or a female, and your weight. Also send me your credit card details. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Just those three things. Um, and I can tell you um, an approximate estimate of what your RMR is. Your resting metabolic rate is um, the amount of calories that you can eat in a day without putting on weight. It's basically the energy we need to survive and to function as best as we can. Now, what was I saying? It takes your body more calories to maintain muscle than fat. Do you hear that? So that's why it's also better to have more muscle. So the estimates are that for every half a kilogram of muscle that you gain, your resting metabolic rate also goes up about 30 to 50 calories. What does that mean? It means you can eat more. Hi, Mitch Thompson, nice to see you. We're talking about muscle and the importance of strength training. Those of you that just joined, I will put this on the replay so you can get the, the start um, of this uh, live where I was talking about exactly what muscles are, how they work, why, why, what, when, and all of that sort of stuff. So I'm up to the benefits now. Let me know if you have any queries, questions, epiphanies, or any um, stories about uh, the benefits that you've received with uh, strength training. So the first one was body confidence. The second one was fat burn. Leonard wrote fat burn, a lot of fat burn. Totally. And that's why I love strength training. Number three is it makes your human healthy. The human body we live in is a direct reflection of our life. Physical, mental, emotional. Do you know, our human is a direct reflection of that. So what is your human saying to you? Strength training, are you ready for this? It increases bone density. It builds a stronger heart. It reduces your resting blood pressure. It improves your blood flow and your circulation. It halts muscle loss. It helps control your blood sugar levels. It improves cholesterol levels and it improves your balance and your coordination, which is something that we start to lose 
as we get older. The benefits of strength training cannot be put in a pill. So that's why it's something that you must do and it's something that you must continually do for the rest of your life. Number four, how are we going for time? Got to finish up soon. It increases energy. So not only will you find yourself with more energy and confidence, less stress, less anxiety, and a better overall mood, but you'll actually begin to think better. Resistance training has been proven to help increase your cognitive uh, function. So I always say this to my clients, the stronger your muscles get, the bigger your muscles get, the bigger your brain gets. So um, just keep at least two to four days in your week for strength training because it's super duper important to live your best life. While training too close to your bedtime can be a bad idea. Exercising earlier in the day has been proven to help with insomnia um, and sleep apnea and those sorts of conditions. Um, I have even improved my injuries, my um, RSI in my wrist, uh, my lower back pain, my hip pain, which I sustained from really bad falls. Um, these are, that was a seven year injury, that was about, a, my back and my hip was about a five year injury. My ankles, I would always sprain them every month or two. Uh, I used to play lots of basketball and netball as a child, so that doesn't happen much anymore. Actually, funny I say that, I just sprained my ankle about four weeks ago. <laughs> Someone left a dumbbell on the floor at the gym and I stepped on it and rolled my ankle. But with all the training that I've been doing, it took about one to two weeks to heal, which is unheard of. So make sure you keep up your strength training because it actually helps you heal your injuries a lot quicker. Number five, it helps prevent degenerative diseases and um, any other sorts of diseases. You know, heart disease is a leading cause of death for both men and women. Strength training helps correct issues relating to cholesterol, high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, and inactivity. All factors for heart disease. We must protect ourselves, guys. Cardiologists are even starting to recommend strength training for people that have suffered a heart attack um, as little as three weeks after their attack. So hopefully one day, cardiologists tell all their patients to do strength training. Hopefully one day all doctors will tell every patient to start doing strength training. Um, can you explain to me how drop sets are beneficial? Says WD Marketing. Drop sets is a, is a technique of strength training. Um, at the start of the live I was saying how there's different types of training. Um, WD Marketing, I say do drop sets, you know, just to do something different and add variety and maybe shock your muscles a little bit more. Um, so what a drop set is, is when you lower the amount of weight um, after a set. So say if you're doing a leg extension and you're doing the first set at 50 kilos. Um, you burn out your legs and they die and then you do your second set at say 45 kilos and then you do your third set at 40 kilos and then you do your last set at uh, 35 kilos it's just a different way to uh, break apart the muscle fibers and to help the healing process so you get stronger um, I do that with my clients as well just to add some variety um, but there's lots of different ways that you can do strength training. Do drop sets. Um, <laughs> it's really funny when your muscles start to fatigue um, and you can't even get to the end of your rep range, which is fine. You know, when, once you're pushing past your edge, you've reached the edge of that um, muscle resistance um, and that's when you're going to get stronger. Um, after that, you most probably won't be able to walk the next day or you'll feel like a baby giraffe learning how to walk. Um, but make sure you have your recovery day, do your cardio and stuff. Try a drop set. Just try one. Keep dropping the number because you should be um, really struggling to lift up the weight um, as you're dropping the set. 
kilos. It's not like it gets easier and easier. No, no, no. No, no, no. I've tried them. Um, it gets harder and harder because remember at the start I was talking about slow twitch muscle fibers and fast twitch. They all come into play and um, the ones that burn out quicker, they don't come to help you anymore. Um, number six, another benefit of uh, strength training is it improves the quality of your life. Strength training has also been proven to help manage and improve the quality of life of people who have recently had a stroke, have had a spinal cord injury, people with arthritis, osteoporosis, Parkinson's disease, Down syndrome, lymphedema, fibromyalgia, cancer survivors and clinical depression, people that have anxiety. It is good for everyone everyone i have clients that have uh, brain injuries i have clients that have spinal cord injuries that i train i have clients that are in their 80s i have clients that are uh, young people like in their teens 20 years of age i have mums that have just had bugs strength training i have pregnant women that i help um, to make sure that the recovery process of giving birth um, is easier um, and, and it does work you know I have some of my clients that are like my birth was easy like the recovery process was easy because I kept up with the strength training number seven guys the last benefit of strength training my benefit is it's fun it's fun um, in addition to all of the above um, strength training benefits that I just mentioned, strength training can be fun. It doesn't have to be boring. Uh, whether you're looking at the most effective 20 to 30 minute workout, to stay fit and look good in the swimmers, or are looking for a competitive sport that you can really get into, uh, strength training can and will help you meet your goals. It's easy and fun to see progress as you strength train because um, you'll feel it. Oh, this feels light today. Oh my gosh, I'm getting stronger. I'm going to up my weight now. So it's easy to measure. And if you're looking um, to improve other areas, for example, a sport or running or you're a dancer or you're doing yoga, strength training is an easy choice to complement it. So for example, I do something called Bikram Yoga. WD Marketing says, thank you, good, let me know how you go. Um, I do something called Bikram Yoga and there's lots of uh, single leg stuff. So I have been strength training lots of single leg stuff as we did last program. And I've noticed that those postures feel a lot easier now because I've strengthened that up. I couldn't ever bear weight on my hands when doing push-ups because of my RSI in my wrist from being a masseuse. I had cysts, um, but after learning how to do strength training safely, uh, the one that we do on Mondays, uh, those of you that train with me, I am now able to do push-ups, I'm able to load my wrist, and I don't cry. So this could be you if you have an injury, especially those people that have knee pain, back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, any sort of pain. Um, common objections that I hear about strength training is I'm too old, or it's too late now, or my shoulder is too sore. We hear this from 30 year olds, we hear this from 60 year olds, we hear this from any age and like the excuse, I don't have time, it's a lie. If you say that you're too old, you're the exact person that should be doing strength training. Weight training has also been shown to delay uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. And it has shown great results in the frail elderly. It's been shown to show great results in the frail elderly. We're not gonna make you lift a 100 kilo deadlift barbell. You will start slow, but you will get stronger and you will feel better. Another common objection is my focus is on gold and walking and I need to stay trim. Studies have shown that strength training actually increases the endurance of your muscles, um, which is what you need if you play a sport. Endurance of the muscle, particularly if you play a sport 
that has a repetitive movement like a golfer's swing or walking each day. Strength training can stimulate muscles that aren't being used in that sport. It can help balance out imbalances from that sport, um, from uh, repetitive movements, and it can help you perform better in that sport. So if you do play a sport, for example, like golf, and you're always swinging that way, uh, one thing that I would do is make sure that I'm balancing out the other side as well so that you don't end up with an injury. Hairdressers as well, for example, they're always tilting to one side and then they end up with neck pain. So I would make sure that I'm doing uh, some sort of balancing work to make sure that uh, they don't end up with an injury. Um, another common objection is I don't want to get big and I don't want to get bulky and it's usually from women. Um, so this is one of the biggest myths surrounding strength training. When um, I started strength training, I didn't want to get bulky. I didn't get bulky. I got leaner. The heavier I lifted, the leaner I got. The bulky look in women doesn't happen by mistake or it doesn't happen overnight either. We simply do not have the hormones necessary to get there on our own. To achieve this look, women have to eat incredible amounts of food and consume incredible amounts of drugs or supplements. When we strength train normally without these supplements, we end up just looking like lean athletes. That's it, fit looking athletes. Um, I'm overweight, I need to lose weight first. That's another common objection that I hear. Start with strength training. When you're overweight, my guess is that you want to be preserving the muscle tissue you have while losing the majority of your weight through fat. True? You don't wanna be um, getting wobbly, okay? You wanna retain the mus muscle tissue while losing fat. With strength training, your overall weight loss may seem slower, but you will lose centimeters faster. And those of you that train with me know that I'm all about the centimeters. Strength training increases your metabolism. As I said before, um, as long as you're still eating in a deficit, um, you'll lose weight. All of my clients who are on a fat loss journey do strength training, all of them. Don't be scared of it. I find that boring is another common objection. Set some goals to make it fun. If you can't train with me or a PT, set some goals to make it fun. To be able to do a goblet squat with a 20 kilo barbell or on my back, or a 20 kilo dumbbell, sorry, in six weeks, or to be able to do five push-ups in four weeks. Set a goal, have a target to reach. With strength training, you can see your progress so clearly um, and it will motivate you more and more as you're getting closer and closer to your goal. So if you aren't a fan of the downtime, you know when you have to rest in between your sets, put on an audio book or a podcast on your smartphone um, and, or throw on one of my Spotify playlists that I have um, while you're training to ensure that you're always moving instead of just sitting and waiting in between sets. Um, my clients as well hate the downtime in between sets. They're just like, what's next, what's next, what's next? But um, I either give them a little active rest recovery or they're probably dead by that point and enjoy the rest. So that is why strength training is important. I hope this has motivated you to make sure this is an integral part of your fitness and training uh, routine. And I hope that um, it's given you a little bit of insight as to why you must do it for the rest of your life. I will be back next week with part three, which is why we must do cardio training. So part one was why we must do mobility training. This one was strength training. And part three will be why we must do cardio training. Thank you so much for watching. I will post this up on my YouTube as well so that you can watch it. And let me know if there's any other particular things that you'd like me to talk about or educate you on. And I will. Bye for now.